This is going to be our daily get together <laughs> for a little while. Um, I want to thank you all for being here. I want to. This this is uh, you know the, the press obviously is welcome, and we're we're so glad to have you here. You helped to get the word out. Uh, but again, this is um, directed at our community and and trying to get the word out about you know what is happening and giving you. We're going to be giving you daily updates, uh, and we're, we're going to get through this. So um, I want to first start. Um, just to let you know, a couple of quick updates. Um, Hoboken University Medical Center is open. It's open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, and I want people to uh, to understand. I think it's really obviously it's extremely important that we have a hospital here in Hoboken and we have uh, a place to go. The hospitals have been filling up in other areas, and that's been actually a, a, a challenge for us. And making sure we want again, we want to make sure that our community is safe and um, and taken care of. So we are so uh, so glad that Hoboken University Medical Center they faced um, flooding and that they were able to uh, to get open back up. So we appreciate the support that the state provided in helping to make that happen. Now I know everyone. Everyone's big question is what's going on with the power. Um, so I want to just give you a, a quick update and explain the situation. Um, part of the basically PSC and G wanted to make sure that we have a hospital, and so they um, I would say Jerry rigged the system so that they could make sure that there was power to the hospital, and that's why uh, some of us who are uh, some people who are connected to the hospital grid uh, were powered up and uh, they've, they've done as much as they can possibly do until they fix the substations um, and so I want to uh, let you know that I mean I've been on the phone I'm probably on the phone with PSC&G about every two hours and asking what more you, do you need so and I'll just step back and explain like that basically there's kind of a command structure here where there's a OEM system where we make the ask and uh, our, our new best friend Ed uh, from FEMA he makes the ask as well and then I also uh, have uh, contacts now with the Department of Energy and uh, higher level FEMA representatives that I'm reaching out to and saying okay here's what they need they need more assistance so so far be through this process we've been able to get 56 additional technicians here on top of what PSE&G already had so these are people who came in they've come in from uh, Vermont and, and and other places Kansas City to uh, come in and be a part of on the site in Hoboken 56 additional technicians in addition to what PSE&G already had working here they've asked they've said that they need 44 more technicians so we are uh, actually I just spoke uh, just minutes ago with the Secretary of uh, Housing and Urban Development and uh, explained to him we need 44 more technicians as part of what we're going to be asking and then I also explained to him our power situation which I want to explain to all of you I mean basically we're PSE&G is, is following uh, two paths to try and get this done as quickly as possible so one is bringing in all the technicians that they uh, can can get to um, uh, basically do the repairs that need to be done it's extensive repairs that I'm I am told that need to be done to our substations they were severely damaged and it's a very tedious challenging process of taking them off, getting them cleaned, retesting them, the system, and uh, requires, um, you know, it, it's just a, it's a time-consuming process, and they are working and, and trying to get that done uh, as quickly as possible. Then they are also pursuing another avenue, is trying to find the circuit breakers uh, that were used for this particular substation. So I'm told it was described as, uh, it's kind of like finding a needle in the haystack. So when they made each substation, <laughs> you know, they're done with different circuit breakers. And so we, this is something where PSC and G is working on it. We've got people at the state level. And then I, you know, we're making sure, I'm working with Ed to make sure that on the federal level that we're getting support uh, from the from the government, and we absolutely are to uh, have people um, working to try and find the right circuit breaker uh, that will reduce the time frame by uh, as much as two days. So um, you know that's 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 where we're at. We're pushing as as hard as we can um, right now. The the time frame. Um, it's, it's going to be through the weekend. Um, you know, it sort of depends on what, what the results are. I mean, PSC and G's is projecting it's still that, you know, from when this all started, a seven to, day, seven to ten day time frame. But it really depends on whether or not we can find those circuit breakers. And we've got all hands on deck, you know, and pushing hard to, uh, to, to make sure that we find those circuit breakers. So that means that potentially we're looking at, um, you know, trying to support our community um, 
you know, till possibly next housing. No one's stranded. I mean, we're housing. People are choosing to um, shelter in their own homes, and it's thanks to all of the people behind me, from you know the team working for the city, the, ho the police department, the fire department. But these are all volunteers standing behind me. These are volunteers. And I just, I just cannot thank them enough, and actually we have a lot more volunteers. We've deployed them to try and put up public notices across the city and posting them on, on people's doors. I know that the communication has been difficult, I mean, especially those seniors who are, you know, in there, you know, they're upstairs and can't get downstairs, and um, so we want to try and get the notices uh, out to them. Uh, so at least putting it on, putting on all the doors and, and getting that information out citywide is still a challenge, obviously, when we don't have the power. So the volunteers are what's going to get us through this. I mean, coming together as a community, and I have to say Hoboken is one strong community. We are going to come through this. We're going to get through this. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the process and the, the structure that we've been setting up. I mean, the, the response has been unbelievable, unbelievable the support that we are getting from this community and, and uh, from, from other places um, across the country, actually. And I heard we have someone flying in from, well, some uh, people flying in from Israel even. So um, we, so I want to just talk to you briefly. I mean, we're setting up what we'll call a, a pod structure where there's going to be locations um, throughout the city where we're dropping off the food, working, coordinating with the National Guard and volunteers and dropping off the food at certain locations and then volunteers uh, will be taking those supplies and bringing them you know, up to you know, uh, it, the senior buildings and making sure that those who really need the supplies, uh, the food and the water and the battery, you know, flashlights are, are getting what they need. So those supplies are are, are coming in and we're setting up that pod, pod structure and we're going to need uh, as many volunteers as possible to kind of keep us through you know this process until we get the uh, the energy back on because we do believe that is the you know sheltering them within their home is the best way to do this so I also you know was just talking to uh, and the uh, Secretary of Housing and Urban Development about the fact that we need we need more electricians we need more pumps. We need to make sure to pump out all of the elevators and all of the big buildings, and we need to assist our residents as well. Um, and we need more generators, and we need more food. So, I mean, that's where we're at. When we're, if we're looking at next Wednesday, we're going to need more food, and that is that is the ask that's coming in. So, for anybody listening, it's you know dropping off at uh, Hoboken High School, Eighth and Clinton, and you know I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who who has already been uh, dropping off food. But between you know getting the assistance in from the federal government and also uh, donations, uh, that, that's just so important. Um, also, just want to make sure that everyone knows that the A and P is open back up. The Target in Jersey. City, CVS, um, Uptown, Rite Aid, Kings, there's a number of stores that are opening back up. Um, we have, oh, this is an amazing story. We have a food truck over um, at Church Square Park. Um, they heard about us, and um, it's uh, the, the chef for Brad Paisley, who came in and uh, just heard heard what was happening through the news and came in and he's cooking, um, he and his team are cooking uh, free meals for everyone in Church Square Park. Um, so that's that's another location. Uh, the Elks Club is also um, cooking free meals and, and serving hot meals so people can stop in there and Goya is uh, supporting a lot of the, the food there. We have um, free ices available at PSENG and we also made some deliveries this morning. Um, we are Continuing to pick up the trash, I know there's a lot on the street, and, and we're continuing that process of, of uh, picking up all the trash. Uh, we now have a new ATM system, so on Observer Highway and Bloomfield Street, that ATM structure has been set up. We are setting up a uh, free shuttle bus. It's the school buses that will run uh, up and down Washington Street. So yeah, we will be putting out the, um, that's going to be uh, running up and down Washington Street. So just to give everyone a way to get to all of the resources. And for those who may not have been over to it, I, I do want to, um, and especially those who need to, um, you know, who, who were flooded out and need to get registered to get your FEMA assistance, 
You can go on, it's, they have free laptops and Wi-Fi uh, access over at psc and it's, it's heated, um, and I, I know that there were like 40 people there at 12 a.m. last night, and it's definitely getting used, and we thank psc and for that service, so I want everyone to know. Uh, setting up our facility, uh, you know, getting the location together, but to, to uh, work through the process, there will be a separate meeting for community members and a, a separate meeting for uh, business owners, and so... Um, and then I also just just before I came down received word that uh, the ferry uh, is um, are they're coming in and repairing so the downtown ferry terminal the Navy has arrived and the Army Corps of Engineers has arrived and they are working to uh, get our South Ferry uh, facility uh, running as quickly as possible and we'll be putting out a notice as far as what what time frame uh, that will be so. We're going to be doing these meetings. I know it's, it's uh, you know, sort of day by day. We're going to be briefing everyone on a daily basis because it's really, it's day by day. I know you want more information, and, and um, so I just wanted to, uh, to let everyone know this is going to be a, a daily thing, 2 o'clock, where people can come and, and get the latest update on what's going on. But, again, I, uh, I just cannot thank everyone enough for their tremendous support. Um, I also do want to let people know we are setting up a uh, Hoboken Disaster Relief Fund um, and we'll be announcing uh, um, ways to, uh, to uh, I mean basically for right now it's, it's, it's sending, uh, you know, sending a check to City Hall and uh, with Hoboken Disaster Relief Fund. Um, so I wanted to let everyone know that that's, that's also, uh, we really appreciate that support and that will be used to support our community in this, in this time of crisis. So, um, but just want to thank again all of the people standing behind me, all of the people, all of the volunteers, um, and our, our fire department, our police department, OEM, National Guard. <laughs> uh, it's been amazing. You know, all the way on the local level, state level, federal level, it's really been amazing, the tremendous support. So thank you all so very, very much. So I'll take a couple of questions, and then I am going to... Um, I am going to have to. I'm going to uh, to meet with uh, PSE and G and continue the, the dialogue and pushing as hard as I can. So I'm going to take first um, a couple of questions from the members of the community who might have questions. Can you comment on what your thoughts are regarding the opening of the school? Uh, the school. Yeah. So I'd like to <laughs> actually um, the opening of schools. Uh, Ruthie McAllister came and, and tried to brief me, but I got a phone call from the Secretary of <laughs> Housing Development, so I didn't get that briefing. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Ruthie McAllister, a school board member, to uh, let us know uh, about the schools. Okay, unexpected. Uh, Dr. Uh, Mark Toback, I talked to him this morning. Um, we just like to have the... Okay, it's off the top of my head. Okay, um, just to have you know, just quick about the conditions of the school buildings. These are the Hoboken District Public Schools. Uh, the high school, Demarest, and Brandt are fine. They really sustained no damage. Uh, Wallace and Calabro did uh, take on water, as did Connors. Uh, Wallace and Calabro, it's manageable, and we're working on that. Connors did have the most damage. Uh, their lower level at Connors is their cafeteria and their boilers, and they were submerged between five and six feet of water. So that is being removed, but the good news is uh, the district employees are diligently working. We already have an emergency recovery plan in place that has been approved by the superintendent, the county superintendent of schools, Monica Tone, so we're underway. Of course, like many services, the most important thing it, to reopen schools is that we have power. Uh, once we have power, um, things start to change rapidly. But uh, we do already have, the, Dr. Tobek has already talked with the Hoboken Education Association, which is the union, uh, our teachers union, and um, they're willing to come back in uh, despite the fact that the end of next week was the teachers convention and they're technically off to get school going if we can uh, at the end of next week. Right now, Hoboken District Public Schools are closed on Monday and Tuesday. Okay. Right. okay. Thank you. Obviously, the, the the big challenge is getting the power back in, and like I said, I mean we're we're pushing it as hard as we can. On uh, I'm, I'm I'm talking to them, like I said, every couple of hours, checking in and getting them the resources that they need, so we can make sure that they're getting this repaired as as quickly as possible. Yeah,